Hey everybody, it's Margold today. We're going to go over the Monk's Class Order Hall. Now, as always, with the first tier, the Auspicious Fortune and the Lucky Envelope. Auspicious Fortune only gives you the rare upgrades on non-repeatable quests, um, which is only helpful while leveling. Once you hit 110, it'd be much more efficient to swap off, and uh, I would recommend just starting with Lucky Envelope anyway, since it doesn't take that long to hit 110. Now, it enables the Lucky Envelope ability, which increases the success chance of the first mission you send each day by 20%. If that was a gold mission, 20% can make a huge difference in trying to get that 100% normal, 100% bonus roll number. Definitely worth it. Highly recommend picking up Lucky Envelope. The second tier is Brew House and Enlightenment. Now, Brew House um, allows you the chance to access the bubbling keg inside the storm style inn once a day tapping the bubbling keg will increase will grant you valuable bonuses to assist you while questing in the broken isles while most of the items are just you know weird junk items i would consider them but there is a brewmaster's um secret artifact skin inside the bubbling keg so as a collector i will come back and pick that one time but while i'm optimizing my garrison Enlightenment is the better choice. Newly recruited troops have a chance to be promoted one rank, making them more powerful. Initiates have a chance to become adepts, and adepts have a chance to become masters. So, definitely really cool. Um, it'll help you out with missions because your troops are becoming more powerful. Definitely useful. Um, the third tier is Living Quarters and Pilgrimage. Now, Living Quarters increases the number of each type of troop you can have by one, so if your Tiger Initiates would have an increase by one, and your ad Initiates would have a, Ox Initiates would have a one percent, one increase as well. Oh my gosh, I'm having trouble talking. So you'd have four and three. Um, but Pilgrimage is the better choice initially because it enables a chance on mission success for your champions to return with champion armaments or equipment. So, this means, um, You'll be getting items randomly when they complete their missions. These items will help you upgrade their item level as well as items to equip to them. Um, really good early on because your goal is to get your followers to 850 item level as soon as possible. The, the missions scale with the item level of your followers, so the better types of followers you have, the better missions you will see. Um, the gold missions scale as well with your follower item level, so if everybody is 850, you'll be seeing really, really profitable missions. And I always recommend saving enough follower item levels to get to the imaginary number of 890 because with garrisons, follower item level went up with patches. I imagine the same thing will happen with the class order hall. So if you have enough to save till 890, that's a huge jump in follower item level. Um, as soon as it comes out, you most likely will be able to get them to the new maximum cap. And then there's no reason you can switch to living quarters, right? This will um, give you more, f you know, like uh, troops, more troops, so you can send more missions more frequently. Just a more useful talent after you've completed getting the item level upgrades and equipments. Um, Path of the Tiger and Path of the Ox. Now, Path of the Ox gives a 5% increase on missions, any type of mission, because it makes your an Ox initiates become Ox adepts. But... Path of the Tiger, Tiger Initiates become Tiger Adepts, which gain a, an increased success chance of missions with minions by 15%. So, overall, I say this is the better choice, even though it only affects missions with minions. Let's say your gold mission is a mission with minions. 15% is going to be way more helpful than just a base small 5% on the Ox Adepts. So, I got to go with this one. The fifth tier is one with destiny allows you to place a work order with one of your for one of your weekly seals of broken fate in exchange for order resources i suppose it's helpful if you're a raider but it's not helpful for the optimization of your class order hall so i would go with celestial favor allows you to recruit celestial celestials have a random monk specialization and can counter a boss so they get a really powerful talent as well as the ability to counter a boss very awesome and it also increases success chance of missions by 30%. It's essentially a champion. And it's a Echo of the Celestial is what it's called. But very powerful talent. Definitely going to help you with your class order missions. Getting those high success chance percents. Definitely useful. 
And then the sixth tier is Fists of Legend. Increase the number of legendary items you can equip by one. If it's an alt, I always say don't pick this. This is a waste of 15,000 order resources. Um, really no point in picking it if it's an alt. But if it's your main, by all means, take that trait. So, hope this was helpful. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.